Hey guys, welcome back to Think Making. This is Anton, and today I'll be reviewing some Peggy Filament by Eason. And yes, this is the first time I'm in one of my videos, so let's get to it. First of all, you should know that PETG is a filament that tries to combine the strength and flexibility of ABS, while being as easy to print as PLA. Although this hasn't been quite my experience, I've found this filament very useful. To start off, the filament comes in a very decent and colorful box. The front only has some statements about the filament, while in one of the sides you can find the contact information of Eason itself. In the other side, you'll find a label that identifies which type of filament is inside, a hole through which you can see the filament, and a QR code, which if you scan with your smartphone will direct you towards Eason's website, rather than the page for the specific filament. So let's go ahead and open the box, and take out the filament roll inside. The first thing you'll notice is the label that identifies the diameter, material, color, and recommended temperature for the filament. Also, the vacuum seal on this filament is so tight, so let's pop it open. Ooh, that sounds so good. The only thing that came inside besides the filament was some silica gel for Jack at Onbox Therapy. One of the first positive things I noticed was that the filament was wind very evenly. In regards to the spool itself, it's held together by two big screws and is transparent which is very helpful to check how low on filament you are. This is especially important when the printer is running. It also has several holes to run the filament through and prevent it from unwinding. The filament itself is very smooth and even, making it easier to extrude. It is also very resistant and quite flexible, so much I couldn't tear it apart, meaning the extruder gear has a great grip on it and isn't prone to slipping. Just look how normal PLA does in this test. But enough of this, let's start printing. To print PETG on glass, set the bed at 85 degrees together with hairspray and brim for adhesion. Otherwise, you'll end up with some nasty warping. I was using an E3D V6 with a 0.5 nozzle and found 242 degrees to be the best printing temperature, yet this may vary between users. For testing purposes, I printed a 3D Benchy, a calibration cube, a Marvin, and a Squirtle. This is only an example of how PETG may warp if you don't use the right settings. As you can see, brim is easily removed, yet support tends to stick too well, so I wouldn't recommend densities higher than 20%. A tricky question when it comes to PETG is whether to use a layer fan or not. Look at this cube. It was printed without a fan and the corners didn't come out so nicely, but the top looks smooth and shiny. Now look at this second cube. It was printed with a fan. The corners are perfect, but the top messed up because of the warping introduced by the fan. Now, this Marvin was printed without a fan and notice the awful quality where there are overhangs. These don't even look like circles, and the bridge in the chin area is bowed down even if it was so small. And there's one more thing. The bottom of this model was printed without a fan, and the top with a fan. Notice how the bottom is much shinier than the top. This may look odd, but it serves a purpose. It is recommended to have layer fans off for the first 5mm in order to get better bed adhesion in the bottom layer, and better quality in the top layers. Notice how arcs, circles, and other overhangs printed much better than in the Marvin. This Squirtle was printed with only one perimeter and no layer fans, yet it turned out perfect. I guess that with practice you'll eventually know which settings are better for which model because not all should be printed the same way. Well guys, so first of all, I have printed quite a lot with this filament, so I know I have my settings right. And yes, if you were wondering, the claims in the box are actually true. For me, the stable melting point was 242 degrees Celsius. It does have a round shape, of course. The uniform diameter, it's dead on. 
I measured it with digital calibers and it does have consistent colors. Well, that's if you use a fan on throughout the whole print or not because not using the fan will yield you a much shinier print. So after using this filament for a while, I can actually say it is good. Yet, you need to get your settings right first because PETG tends to ooze a lot, it tends to be stringy, and yes, it does tend to warp. So after you get your settings right, like your retraction and the temperature, and you get your bed adhesion right, you'll get perfect prints from this filament. Well guys, if you want to try out the filament for yourself, I'll be dropping an Amazon link down in the description. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section down below. Finally, if you want to support the channel and be up to date with the latest maker news, make sure to follow Think Making in Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Well guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, go ahead and give this video a huge thumbs up, and if you still haven't, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Again, thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.